Hello, thank you for joining us here today at Girl Scouts of Central California South for our second annual Cookie University. My name is Mary Higgins and I'm a Girl Experience Facilitator here at Girl Scouts of Central California South and I'm so excited to sh share with you all the things that are in our Cookie University program this year. So the first thing we're going to get started with is your business portfolios that you received either by picking them up at our offices or especially for those of you who went through our Girl Scout Cookie Dr University drive through today and had all kinds of fun learning about the five skills that you learn in our Girl Scout Cookie business. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share with you our portfolios that we handed out. I'm so excited to share with you our portfolios that we've passed out at Cookie University. Right here we have all of our levels. We've got blue for our daisies, brown for our brownies, purple for our juniors, red for our cadets, orange for our seniors, and yellow for our ambassadors. And also inside your um, packet you should have gotten this cute little honey stick of some organic honey that we've got to share because of course the bee is our mascot this year and I'm gonna share with you this tiny little bee that's so cute that we're going to put on to our pencil and then you should have your swap kit and your name tag so I am going to go through how you're going to use your portfolio. So the whole idea behind this part of Cookie University this year is before I worked at Girl Scouts of Central California South, I was a troop leader for 10 years. And these are all the fun tools that I would make for my troop. And it absolutely matches with the five skills that we worked on at Cookie University last year. So since we can't be in person this year, I wanted to bring the Cookie University that we held last year home to you in your living rooms. So this business portfolio is what allowed me to do that with you. So I'm going to show you how you're going to work with your portfolio once you get home. So I'm going to show you through the daisy folder here what's inside your portfolio when you open it up. Now, because daisies and brownies don't have the same dexterity as older girls, we went ahead and put them inside the three hole prong, the pages that have hole punches. And I'm going to show you a little later for the older girls how you can fix that. But for the daisies and brownies, this has already been done. Now, on the inside pocket, you'll find some of these stickers. And I'll go over what you're going to do with those stickers in just a moment, too. But in the back pocket, you're going to find all these handouts. Now, these handouts are going to help you with many of the cookie entrepreneurial family pin activities. Completing all five activities of your cookie entrepreneurial family pin is how you're going to graduate our Cookie University this year. And these are some of the resources that you're going to use to do that. Now for the daisy and the brownie level, one of your activities is working with money. So you have your sheet of cookie bucks. Then we also have a bunch of other pages that I'm going to go over with you and how you're going to work with them. So um, let's go ahead and I want to get started and show you how to put your portfolio together. So the things that you have in your um, portfolio is of course you have your pencil and your cute little bee. So what you can do is you can take the sticker, this bee has a sticky back, so you take the, the paper off your sticky back sticker and then I like to put it right over top of the number two on my pencil. So you have your cute little bee, just like that, to keep in your business portfolio. Now, I tell my girls every year that, did you know that the Girl Scout cookie business is the largest girl-led entrepreneurial businesses in the world? And 
One thing that business women need is a business portfolio. Some of them carry an attache case, some of them carry a presentation case, but I'm going to show you how to put together your business portfolio today. So the first thing, of course, we've got our pencil so we can do our homework to do our script. The next thing you're going to want is if you can find a dry eraser marker, that's going to help you with um, your name tag and a couple of other things that I'll show you a little later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my name on my name tag. So the reason we have laminated name tags is that handwriting as a daisy is going to be very different than your handwriting as like a junior or a cadet. So all you have to do is erase this and rewrite it if you don't like the way it looks. You could change your name every day or choose a different color, whatever you like. So here's your name tag and then you can just take that and put it right on your um, uniform when you're out selling your Girl Scout cookies. Just like I have my name tag for my work. I'm going to show you how to put together your business portfolio. So for you older girls, go ahead and take all your pages out. And in this pocket, you'll find a bunch of stickers. You should have at least six stickers. And if you are one of the three girls whose extra stickers I found floating around in the bottom of the box, I sincerely apologize. But I'm sure that you're going to be a great artist. And all you have to do is take a marker and draw on your portfolio and decorate it any way you want. You don't have to have these stickers. I just made all these stickers to help you out. So go ahead, decorate your portfolio any way you like. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your portfolio. And the first sticker I've got here is this really super long one. And I made this one. You could put it right here on the binder of your book if you'd like. You could put it on the other side if you like. You could put it straight down the middle. It's your choice where you want to put your sticker. And as you can see, I realize that these stickers are a little tough to get open. That's okay, just use some patience. But that's the way homemade stickers are. They're not quite as easy to open up as store-bought stickers. So what you might wanna to try to do is line it up so you know it's gonna be exactly the way you want it if you want it to be straight. If you want it to be crooked like that, you could even do it that way. You could put it on this side. You could do it that way. It's your portfolio. You can do it any way you want it to go. I like the way it looks when it's over here on the left. So the next, Sticker you can find. This one's a little easier to open up because it has a little tab here to the side or maybe to the opposite side. And this is the one that says my business portfolio. And again, you could put this at the bottom. You could put this at the top. I'm going to put this one at the bottom. And what you can do is you can take your marker or your pencil and put your name right there on the front. You don't have to. Since this is gonna be a portfolio that you're carrying around when you're selling to customers and maybe you don't want them um, to, to know people to know your name. So you could just put your name on the inside. Um, we also have all kinds of stickers right here. These two stickers um, just set to the side, but these are also stickers that I made that are extra. And so you just take your scissors and you cut those apart. And these are just extra fun stickers for you to decorate your portfolio with. So you can put them on the front, you can put them on the back, you can put them anywhere you want them to go. And again, like I said, homemade stickers are sometimes a little hard to open up, but you just, I like Thin Mints, so I'm gonna put my Thin Mints right up there. So you can take all of these and put them all over or portfolio, however you want them to be. Like I said, you can put some on the front, you can put some on the back. Actually putting this one on the back that says, thank you for your support, might not be a good, uh, a bad idea because then when you're sitting here holding your um, portfolio, 
um, it will say thank you for your support on it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to open it up to the middle. Now you have these other two stickers. Now your portfolio has two pockets, one in the front and one in the back, and it has these three prongs that are going to hold some of your paperwork, not all of your paperwork, just some. And then um, you also, when you have your cookie sales going on, you're going to get lots of receipts from your cookie chairperson of your troop. So take this receipt in this pocket and put it on this back folder here, because this is where you're gonna keep your receipts so you can keep track of your cookie business. Then the last sticker I have here is an information sticker. And you could put it down here on the pocket here. You could put it up here in the middle. And this is just so you can put your information in here. If it says, if found, please call. Now in Girl Scouts, you always want to keep your information private. So you want to have your parents' contact information here, not your own. If you are an older Girl Scout, say like a cadet or a senior or an ambassador, and you're lucky enough to have your own cell phone, that's a discussion you need to have with your parents as to when they believe you're old enough and responsible enough to start passing out your own um, contact information to your customers. As a parent, I have two girls. This is going to be their 11th cookie season. So now that they are sophomores in high school, I believe this is going to be the first year that I'm gonna let them start using their own contact information under supervision um, on their cookie sales things. But definitely, if you're a younger Girl Scout, your parents' cell phone number goes there. Then you need to put down your troop cookie chairperson, their name and their phone number. Then you put down your troop leader and their phone number. And then I have two other lines for other. In my Girl Scout troop, I would always print out the whole troop roster with all the parents' permission, of course, that had everybody's phone numbers. Because in my troop, we booth a lot. So that would give all the parents, every other parent's phone number so that if they were supposed to meet them for the booth that day, they would know how to get in touch with them. So you could put that on, you don't have to have it on a sticker. You can make your own lines and draw even more phone numbers all over your portfolio if you need. Um, just try to keep it looking sort of neat if you can. The uh, next thing is important dates. What is the start date of our cookie season? What is the end date of our cookie season? And what day is your money due back to your troop? Now, I didn't fill this in because this way, if you use pencil, you can use the same portfolio from year to year and you can erase those dates. Also, the day that your money is due into your troop, some troop leaders want to have that money in early so they can have time to take it to the bank. Uh, but there is a deadline of when you absolutely have to have that money in. So you need to talk to your troop leader to find out if they're gonna give you, tell that deadline, or if they want you to turn in your uh, Girl Scout cookie money, say at your last meeting during the cookie sale. So that's all we're gonna do with the stickers. The next thing we're gonna do for those of you who are juniors, cadets, seniors, and ambassadors, you are going to take three of your pages out of your resources and we're going to put them in the three prongs. Now, if you are a brownie or a daisy, Miss Hovita, our really awesome Connect Girl Scout leader, um, helped out, helped you out and did that for you. But what you're going to do is you're going to take these three pages that have the hole punches and they're already or they should be already in the order in which you want them to go into your book. You're going to put your cookie entrepreneurial family pin in first. Then you're going to put in your customer list second. Now, this is one of the things that you're going to use in one of the steps to our cookie entrepreneurial family pin. So that's an important, important to know where that um, document is. Then we also have my digital networking tips for cookie entrepreneurs and families. 
Of course, this year is very different than a standard Girl Scout cookie season, and a lot of our sales is going to be digital. And then another safety tip for online marketing. So if you have any questions about the online marketing and what you can or can't do, you can always give us a con contact us here at Girl Scouts of Central California South, and we can advise you as to uh, what they recommend. But these online tips will give you a lot of information and answer a lot of your questions. So go ahead and slip those hole punches through the three prongs. Now, some people go ahead and open up their wings like that, but then you have this piece loose and it doesn't keep your um, portfolio as protected. The best thing to do is to line up these holes and slip them right through those rings, just like that. And then open up those wings of those prongs and squish them right flat down. Okay. So that is how you put together your business portfolio. Now there's some other tools that are in your handouts that are gonna go inside. Remember when I talked about having your receipts in this pocket? Well, a really good thing to have, oh, I apologize, just goes to show you that even adults make a mistake sometime. Your inventory list is the last page that goes inside your portfolio. And that is on the last page for a reason. Now, if you want to have it loose so you can work with it, you can slip it right into this pocket where your receipts go, but then you run the risk of losing it. So the best way to keep track of it is to go ahead and put it in these prongs and keep it nice and tidy and right there where you've got it. Now, the secret to using this inventory list is you'll see all sorts of information at the top of it. So at the top, you're gonna to put in your name and don't fill in anything else at the top here. That's where you're gonna calculate all your numbers as you're going through your sale. The thing you are gonna write down is when you first pick up your cookies, you're gonna put down the date, you're gonna put in how many cookies, you're gonna put in the total, and then you're gonna make any notes. And every time you exchange cookies or money with your co troop cookie chairperson, you're gonna fill out a new line. And that troop cookie chairperson is gonna give you a receipt and you're gonna keep that receipt right here in your pocket. Now, another great hint that I always recommend my girls do is in addition to that, take a picture of it with your camera and text it to somebody or text it to yourself or just make sure it's in your camera. So if you have a paper copy plus a digital copy, you're covered and you'll know where you are. And then you won't have to call your troop leader all the time and say, now, how many cookies have I sold yet? Because you will already know because as a businesswoman, you're gonna be on top of things. So some of the really great resources we have inside of here. Um, there are three of these resources that I want to show to you that I highly recommend that if you have access to a laminator, you go ahead and laminate these three pages. Um, if your troop has a laminating machine or if your mom has a laminating machine, um, they're really going to work really well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what these pages look like after they're laminated and then I'm going to demonstrate how to laminate one of them. Um, the first one we have is your simple script for selling cookies. Now this is one of the resources you're going to use in fill, finishing one of your activities for your cookie entrepreneurial family pin. And you're going to take a uh, marker. Don't use a Sharpie marker. Don't use a permanent marker. Use either a dry eraser board marker or even a washable Crayola marker. Those you can wipe off and clean off and reuse this um, script year after year. The important part about this script that I like is if you're a little girl and you're a little nervous and you feel more comfortable reading your script and I'm sitting here reading my script, what's on the other side of my script? Oh, it tells people all about the cookie share program. So I can be talking to them about my script and say, hi, my name is Mary and I'm a Girl Scout in Troop 0000. Would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? I'm participating in the Girl Scout cookie program, which is teaching me how to run my own business. And my troop is raising money to 
help the puppies and kitties at the um, at the animal shelter or whatever project that your Girl Scout troop is going to do. Would you like to donate some Girl Scout cookies to our cookie share program? These donated cookies are tax deductible and will be given to the military. I can provide you with a special receipt. And here is the special receipt right here. It's in your portfolio. What you may want to do is make copies of this. Any of these documents here, if you want to print extra copies, there will be a link on our Girl Scouts of Central California South website on um, the Cookie University page. You will find a, a, a downloadable link for all of these documents. So this, and you'll notice it has our Girl Scouts tax ID number on it too, so that people can um, use it for their tax deductible donations. The next thing that we have in our Girl Scout resources that I really like is our menu. Um, and the back side of it has the food allergen guide. So the menu really helps out a lot when you go to a door and they're like, well, what kind of cookies do you have? So I like to laminate my menu. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So this is a laminator that I like to use at home. My daughter really likes to have it for her crafts and things too. Um, but a laminator is a really good thing to have if you do lots of projects. And maybe you could put that on your Christmas list this year if you're a troop leader. So you just turn it on, you put the paper inside these special plastic sleeves. And as it goes through the machine, there's a really hot, um, really hot rollers in there that rolls the paper right through. And you can see it's melted that plastic right together. It's a little bit warm, so don't touch it right away. Mostly uh, grown-ups should use the laminator machine. It's not a good thing for kids to use. It's pretty safe. I mean, you can't get your fingers in there, but this plastic does come out quite warm. And that's all there is to it. So the great thing about these laminated pages is now this piece of paper is going to last me a very long time. And I can get lots of use out of it and I can pass it to people when I'm at my lemonade stand and people can see it and look, use it and touch it. And then if you're passing that to people to keep it nice and clean, you can use your, your sanitizing wipes and you can wipe it right off. And then your menu is nice and clean and ready to use with your next customer. And the last of the resources that I suggest laminating. Now you don't have to laminate these pages. If you want to, you could just keep reprinting out more pages if your pages become damaged. Or with this game, this is a game that I like to play with my Girl Scouts. It keeps them motivated. It keeps them having fun while they're selling. On the back side are some of the rules that you can use to play different types of games with this. But basically the idea is you get a dry eraser marker and every time you sell a box of cookies, you fill in a marble. And maybe your friend who's selling cookies with you has a pink marker and she's going to fill in pink mar marbles and you can see who gets the most sales. Or if you're just selling by yourself, you can compete against yourself and say, okay, for the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm only going to color green marbles. And then the next 15 minutes after that, I'm going to do purple marbles. And you can compete against yourself to see how well you do over time. One of the most fun games that I find doing with this is um, my last game on the list. I love this game because it says is selling with a partner who see who can get the most no's before you get a yes i dare you to get more than 20 no's while you're selling girl scout cookies because girl scout cookies are so yummy i don't think we've ever gotten to 20 before somebody says yes 
and it's really funny to see the little girls with their with their card game and their thing and they go would you like to buy some girl scout cookies and the customer walks by and goes oh no thank you and they're like yeah and the person goes no no i said no thank you she's like okay yes thank you very much have a good day and they walk away confused going why is she happy that i said no and then they'll start getting four or five or six no's and they're like yeah i'm getting a whole bunch of no's all right let me see how many no's i can get and then somebody comes along and they go would you like to buy some girl scout cookies and they say well yes i would thank you and they're like oh man and the person is confused because they're like wait a minute Aren't you supposed to be happy that I'm buying Girl Scout cookies? So it's a little bit of a backwards game that's really fun to play. And it makes customers just a little bit confused until you tell them that you're trying to see how many no's you can get to get to a yes. That's just one of the fun sales tactics because every salesperson knows that you have to go to so many no's before you finally get a yes. And this is a way to make that process more fun and a little easier to bear because even grown-ups can sometimes have a hard time if they get told no, 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 and it's hard to stay motivated. So if you could turn it into a fun game, it's a whole lot easier to get to that yes. All right, let's see what we've got next in our resources. So if you are a Daisy Scout or a Brownie Scout, in your resources only, I have this cookie dough and what you're going to do, you're going to take your scissors, you're going to cut them out and then you're going to have all kinds of cookie dough. You're going to have five ones and two tens and two fives and a 20 and you're going to practice making change. You're going to pretend with your family that you're selling Girl Scout cookies and you're going to practice making change. Now I'm going to give you a hint that's going to make your cookie troop chairperson so happy with you. If you can take these ones, when you sell your Girl Scout cookies and you get a whole bunch of ones, every time you give change back to somebody, give them back the change in ones. Now, that's an important thing, and I'm not going to go into it because we're going to go into these in our activities on how to count change back properly. But the more ones you can get rid of, the less ones your cookie troop chairperson is going to have to count, and they will thank you for that. So make sure you check out our videos on our Girl Scouts of Central California South YouTube channel. All those videos are going to go over every step of how you're going to use all of these things. So check out our money management videos for brownies and daisies on what you're going to do with those. So the next thing we have in our resources, we already went through our receipt with our tax deduction. We already went through our menu. The next thing I have, I've got this really great business tool for you. So as a business tool, um, sometimes you'll go to a business and they'll, you can say, can I come into your business and see if your employees would like to buy some cookies? And some businesses will say yes, but some businesses will say, no, I really don't want you to um, bother my employees, but you can leave an order sheet in the break room or something like that. So I have these, thank you for your Girl Scout cookie order slips and you can cut these in half you can reprint more of them and you can leave these in a break room or you can use these to organize your sales if somebody you have a bunch of sales that you've done um, all over the phone and you're trying to organize them in your living room this is a way you could put down who your customer is where they're at and you always want to put down of course your phone number down here little Girl Scouts put down your parents phone number and that way they can call you and tell you what kind of cookies they want or you could stop back by to that business and make an arrangement with the business owner that you know every Monday I'm going to stop by and pick up my orders so I can fill orders for your employees so that's a good business tool that you can use um, another thing that we've got here is are 10 tips on running a successful cookie business and there's lots of good advice here um, it's a lot of the things we went over last year except I changed our boothing information to information about lemonade stands because this year is going to look like a very different year for Girl Scout cookies 
and we're going to have a really exciting lemonade stand class in January with the Women in Engineering Club from Fresno University. And I'm so excited and the girls are so excited too that are going to come from the college because a lot of them were Girl Scouts when they were girls and they can't wait to help you build your very own lemonade stand out of PVC pipe. So check that out on our Girl Scout event calendar and sign up for that class. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. And then we went over our script. And also, when you have that lemonade stamp, I have this thing. And the funny thing is, is you look at one side and one side's right side up and the other side's upside down. Did I make a mistake? No, I didn't. This is what's called a tent. You're going to take this page and you're going to fold it right in half. Now, this page doesn't have to be laminated, but if you're going to have it outside at your lemonade stand, um, you, we all know that in the springtime, sometimes it gets sprinkly. And if you have this page laminated, then it will last longer. But you're just going to fold it in half like a tent, and you're going to set that right on the top of your lemonade stand. And I highly recommend you have the side that says, We accept cash, checks, and credit cards facing your customer. And then if you have a customer that says, Well, what happens to all this money from the Girl Scouts? Do you even get to keep any of it? You can flip your card right around and it tells all about how the money and the proceeds from the Girl Scout cookies stays locally. And that will help you with your conversations with your customers. Two last of our resources that I just love is that every businesswoman needs to have her business cards. And you have your page of business cards right here. You can download the link. You can print more. You can photocopy this. Or you can just make your own business cards. You don't have to have fancy printed ones. You could have handwritten ones. It's up to you what you like. Um, so you're just going to take these and you're going to cut them out. So you have your own business cards. That when you walk around and you talk to people. And you could pass them out. A really good hint that I tell my girls to do is cut them out and tape them to the box of cookies because when somebody gets their cookies then they have your phone number and when they get to the bottom of their box of cookies and they want more cookies now they know who to call to get more cookies the other thing is when you're out doing your cookie sales so if we are able to walk about our neighborhood and knock on doors to go sell cookies that way I have what's called door hangers and what you're going to do is you're going to cut them right out the middle don't cut the bottoms off yet and then you're going to cut out the center and then you're going to cut off the side and what that does is it makes your cookie holder um, your door hanger so that you can slip it right onto the doorknob of somebody's door you just open that little thing and it slips right onto the doorknob and when they get home they're going to see oh somebody stopped by and is selling girl scout cookies and they're going to have your phone number there and then they'll have two extra business cards that they can pass out to their friends or family at work so that's something you could do if you don't want to pass out two extra business cards if you just want to give them that one you can cut these off and keep them with your business cards also and then you'll ha just have another different design of business cards it's up to you it's your choice and then the very last resource we have as long as you have finished every single activity in the cookie entrepreneurial family pin and again that's on the very first page in all of our portfolios on every level is your cookie entrepreneurial family pin you have to finish all five of these steps Finish all of that, and once you have done that, then you can have your grown-up fill out your information and put down on your graduation certificate that you have earned your Girl Scout University Graduate Certificate. And make sure and join us in January where you're going to have live graduation ceremonies for all of our Cookie University participants. So that's all we have for our resources. So to wrap up 
our portfolio introduction tonight, I'm going to finish up with a swap. Everybody loves swaps. And this year's theme is the bumblebee. So in your little Ziploc baggie, we've got your all the supplies you need to make this cute little bumblebee swap. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So what we have here are the things from your swap kit. You're going to have a chenille stem and then you're going to have a black chenille stem. Now they're going to be about this size and what you want to do is cut off almost a thumb size piece off of the black of your chenille stem just like that. Then you're going to take this and you're going to fold it right in half like that and then the outside edges you're just going to bend them out just a tiny bit to look like antenna. Okay now you're going to take your safety pin you're going to open that up and you're going to line up your chenille stems right there along the head of your safety pin. Um, and then I'm going to put that down for just a second. You're going to take your yellow chenille stems and you're going to make one loop on one side about you know the size of the end of your pinky maybe and fold that tip over. Then you make another circle on the other side to make your wing. And you can fold that over. Okay, just like that. Now you're going to match that up right here under your antennas. And you're going to put your black one around the top. You're just kind of making a horseshoe shape. And you put that around the top with the antennas in the middle and your safety pin on the bottom. And then you're going to wrap that black one to close in that safety pin. Okay. Now you're going to take both ends of your chenille stem. You're going to take your yellow and point it back up. You'll notice um, my black is a whole lot longer than my yellow. If your black and yellow are the same size, you could twist them together. But since my black is a whole lot longer, I'm going to just do my black first and I'm going to wrap it all around the stem of this, um, the safety pin. Maybe I'm going to wrap it one more time over the top if you've got space. So you can have a really fat body for your bumblebee. And then what you want to do next, now if I wrapped my black this way, you do not want to go the opposite way with your yellow. You want to go the same direction that you went with your black because then what's going to happen is it will sit right down into the grooves right next to it and it'll look just like it's perfect. So you're going to wrap that yellow right around nice and tight. So now you've got your stripes on your bumblebee. Now these googly eyes, we thought ahead and we got the sticky back googly eyes. So you can take the papers off of these googly eyes and stick them right there on your bumblebee if you like. And that will hold fairly well. If you have a hot glue gun and you're afraid your eyeballs are going to fall off, you can just take a little spot of hot glue. Put some hot glue on those eyeballs. Stick it right there on the bumblebee. And then all you do is you take your Cookie University swap tag, just like that, and you slip it right there through the end. And now you have your cute little bumblebee swap. So those are all the resources that we have in our Cookie University portfolio. I hope you enjoy all of our other videos here at Girl Scouts of Central California South YouTube channel so that you can complete every step of your Girl Scout entrepreneurial family pen. And I hope you enjoy 
using your professional businesswoman portfolios in your cookie sale this year. Thank you for joining us and go out there and make the world a better place.